Wondering what goes on at the VA while our veterans wait and sometimes die waiting for care? Well, take a look. In 2012, taxpayers paid over $11 million to 174 VA employees who, instead of caring for our veterans, worked full-time doing union business. So what's wrong with that picture? Are the unions to blame for at least part of the inefficiencies and corruptions in that agency? Well, joining me is one woman who says, yes, they do share the blame. She's author of Beating Obamacare. She's the former lieutenant governor of New York and a health care expert, Betsy McCoy, one of the few people who actually reads the primary documents. Well, here it is. This what is, is that? the union contract with the biggest union that runs the VA, huh. the American Federation of Government Employees, 316 pages of mind-numbing rules that prevent the VA from using workers where they're really needed, moving a worker from one task to another, one shift to another, reprimanding workers who aren't doing their job properly. Wait, so are those this rules designed a, to help veterans get oh, no. better? This is designed to make sure that the VA is run for the workers, not the vets. That's horrifying. It is horrifying, but there's something we can do about this. We can do this right now to help the vets who are in the waiting lines and sometimes dying in those lines. Half of vets, almost half, are 65 and older. They're on Medicare. They're waiting for things like bypass surgery and cancer surgeries, age-related problems. They can be encouraged to go to civilian hospitals to get that treatment. Civilian hospitals where the survival rates for those surgeries are much higher than at the VA. So they'll get better care faster. What they need is a special Medicare card for vets so they're not clobbered with the higher co-pays and deductibles. Right. at civilian hospitals. We can do that right now, Tucker, while Congress continues to dither and talk about how to reform the VA. So that actually is something the president could achieve instantly. That's right. He we talks can, about, we can I've do got this a phone. right now. We can encourage those seniors to go to civilian hospitals and pick up the tab for the difference in the co-pays and deductibles. It will be budget neutral. Taxpayers are paying Either way, we should do this right now. And you know who's standing in the way of this? The unions. Because the more patients are in the VA, the bigger the budgets, the better for their workers. But not for the patients. They're waiting and dying. And those unions presumably are campaign They have stood in the way of every effort to move patients out of VA hospitals to get quicker civilian care. Huh. So they can't be fired and they trap veterans in the system. That's right. And let's put a face on this. Last night, I talked to Richard Wilson, 64 years old, two terms, two tours in Vietnam. Now he has blockages in his legs, preventing the blood flow to his legs and his feet. Seven months ago, doctors told him he was in danger of a serious heart attack or amputations. He is still waiting for the Portland, Oregon VA to treat him. He calls and emails every day. He's written to his members of Congress, to his senators, no action. Shocking. Shocking. It is Every shocking. veteran it's I've talked to about that has said not only is it inefficient, but the, some of the people they deal with there are rude to them, which is outrageous. Betsy McCoy, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that, and thank you for actually reading the documents. We appreciate it.